Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, two-time winner of the Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nino, and we welcome you to our end of 2019 season episode. Uh, this is our last episode of the year, and with our show, we like to feature local artisans to talk about their life as artists, talk about their work, their art history, what inspires them as artists, and what the influence art has in their lives. Today, I had the privilege of featuring uh, Randy Grubb from Grants Pass. And uh, Randy is internationally known as a automotive artisan responsible for creating really unique custom car builds. And so we, this is part two of our two-part interview with Randy. Uh, we've already completed through part one, and we're gonna to continue to talk about to Randy about some of his other vehicles that we're going to explore uh, in this uh, part two uh, interview. So we welcome Randy to the show once again. All right, glad to be back. Yeah. So uh, uh, with our la with part one, we talked about your first vehicle, the Blastoline Special, uh, and some of the other cars that followed it. And so now we've got some more vehicles to talk about. And, uh, and let me bring up my script here, my notes of what we're supposed to be talking about next. So uh, the first vehicle that we want to talk about in this part two uh, of our interview is uh, Pissed Off Pete, which in itself is a unique uh, name uh, in itself to come up with for a vehicle. It's a unique name and it's a totally unique vehicle. We yeah. started with a 1960 Peterbilt full-size Peterbilt semi-truck. It was okay. actually a, a Model 351 that I got from a, a logger right down the street uh -huh. in White City. Yeah. And he likes to run the big V12 Detroit diesels, mm -hmm. which is just an awesome motor. So I got the idea, why don't I build a really crazy kind of a, uh, a hot rod using a semi-truck? And uh, in this particular case, it's going to be uh, a caricature of one of the altereds. Remember the top fuel altereds that ran in the 60s? They were short wheelbase yeah. dragsters, mm -hmm. and they had 12-spoke spindle mount front wheels. They always had a big Hemi with a, with a big 671 blower and an Erlendale bug catcher on top of it. And then it had big slicks in the back, and they were real short wheelbase dragsters. And they were real wild because they were such wheel, short wheelbase. They really got crazy off the line, and yeah. they were very active. So this was my kind of my caricature of one of the altereds. Yeah, okay. And we started with a an outrageous V12 motor. There's a picture of yeah. it now up on screen. screen. Yeah. It's got a great motor in it, 12 V71 Detroit diesel. And what that means, David, is that it uh, 12 V, so it's a V12, 71 for 71 cubic inches per cylinder. And it's a two stroke. There's two 671 blowers on top of this motor that are actually act, acting as scavenging pumps in this particular configuration and the motor won't run without them and the coolest thing is it's a two-stroke diesel so every time that piston comes down you get a bang out of the deal. Uh -huh. The top of the cab when I got done with it was five and a half feet tall um, so to take a semi truck and to chop it up to this extent uh, and the chop, the wedge chop just gave this really attitude. Uh, the front windshield uh, just looks like it's 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 got its brow scur you know, fur you know, furled at you. Yeah. So that's where the name Pissed Off Pete came from. Okay. Uh, it featured a lot of really great engineering. Uh, the front uh, suicide sprung front axle that you see there, there's no real visible means of support. The rear, uh, the transverse leaf spring is hidden. The rear end uh, that you're seeing in this picture is very unique. The pumpkin has been centered. Uh, it's a it's a nickel plated uh, semi truck rear end that loaded with two six five rear gear ratio and and disc brakes. So believe it or not, pissed off Pete ran down the highway at seventy five miles an hour, got fifteen miles per gallon, did the most wicked burnouts. It was really a cool truck. <laughs> it had a featured saddle interior done by a local saddle maker. I'd seen uh, double R. Uh, leather work and the beautiful saddles that they create and they did a saddle themed interior for me. Oh wow. Really cool stuff. Yeah, I mean that's a really unique looking 
vehicle, but then that's, that's like the theme that runs through your career of auto design. That's exactly right. It's all about stretching the bounds of what a hot rod is. W what can it be? Can, can a hot rod be something that has a tank motor in it? Can a hot rod be a semi truck that mm -hmm. you start with? And I've, in my work, I've tried to show that, yeah, they make great hot rods. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, as a kid, you know, I've, in my life, you know, I've, um, you know, long seen, uh, you know, all your typical kinds of hot rods, you know, tea bucket hot rods and, and Mopar hot rods and all the, you know, everything that you can see normally. And, you know, and, and I've, or in my life I've been to like different, back in the day when they had the World of Wheels car shows and the annual hot rod show that they have here uh, at the Jackson County Expo, lots of cool cars, but there's also a certain kind of commonality to your typical hot rods that have been done over the decades. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right, David. My work is about expanding the boundaries. As we went over in the first episode, I was born and raised in Southern California. My dad was a car guy that could name any old Ford on site, whether it was a 32 or 33, whether it was a standard or a deluxe, whether it had a V860 in it, the, the 80 horsepower flathead V8, or it had a four banger. Mm -hmm. in. He could tell all that just by looking at the outside of the vehicle. Right. So that's the house that I grew up in. So. We go way back, cars are a big part of my, my life. Like I said, I started to build my first car when I was 12 years old, going to the Grand National Roadster shows with my dad on Father's Day, the uh -huh. LA Roadster shows down in LA. Yeah. That was our Father's Day tradition. <laughs> yeah. so, so you're absolutely right, and it was about 15 years ago that I walked out of a Grand National Roadster show and my buddy asked me, which car did you like? And I said, gosh, they're all so much the same today. Yeah. And my work is really about expanding what can a hot rod be back in the 70s it was early it was really easy to tell which was the nicest car because it was the nicest car yeah but today the minutia we're now cutting and rubbing the insides of fenders yeah. we're now the underside of the car has to look as nice as the top side of the yeah. car and now we're combing wiring looms what is a combed wiring loom that's we're going to check to see if the yellow wire is next to the green wire is next to the yellow wire. And then we're going to go back a couple of feet, and if you've twisted those two wires, points off. You don't win, we give the award to the other guy. Yeah. Well, if that's what it takes to win the show, we're lacking some basic creativity. And that's what I tried to bring back to the party was creativity. And let's mix it up. Let's expand the, let's blow the roof off of what a hot rod can be. Can a hot rod, like I say, be something with a double decker, like the yeah. deco liner where we're driving it from the roof, or can it be a semi truck like pissed off Pete? Yeah. And the answer is yeah, it yeah. can be. Yeah, well, it's a great thing to see, uh, to 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 see such originality in in custom car building, uh, because as a kid, I mean, I, you know, one of my early heroes was George Barris. I, as a kid, I collected his George Barris hot rod. Uh, decals. What you know, about Rat Think Ed Roth, yeah, man? You know, yeah. Ed Roth's yeah. work. Yeah. Come on. So, so, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, you know, it, seeing your stuff is is an exciting thing to see, uh, and uh, and you know, I I so appreciate the originality of your of your concepts, and my only complaint is I don't have a damn dime to be able to <laughs> <laughs> to, to hire you to. To, well, that's why we so. take them to places like the, yeah. like the Medford Car Show and let everybody enjoy them yeah. before it goes off into the yeah. rich guy's barn and never gets seen I, again. I'll tell you, if I had the money, you'd be the guy I would hire to design and build the world's first example of a Hirondel. Are you familiar with the Hirondel? I'm not, David. Okay. Well, <laughs> the Hirondel was a fantasy vehicle that was created by uh, Leslie Charteris, the author who wrote the Saint novels. Okay. And the Saint drove a Hirondel. Uh, a car that doesn't exist, but it was a car created by Leslie Charteris, and uh, and it's you know it's it's like the, the, and the Saint story started like in 1929, so this would be like going into the 30s era of of cars, and uh, and I've got ideas that you know you'd be the guy I'd hire to, <laughs> to build a, the world's first real Hirondel. Okay. But uh, but you know it's. Uh, the next car that we want to talk about is your deco liner. <laughs> the deco liner is really a crazy thing. I'd taken a houseboating trip on Lake Shasta, right down the road, and the boat had a flying bridge. And I thought, this is really cool, being able to drive the boat outside, 
but then if it's raining, you go down inside. Yeah. So you can drive it from two different places. Why can't we do that with a car? Yeah, right. Well, so the deco liner is just that. We have two separate driving stations. The we started with a 1970 GMC motorhome that you're looking yeah. at now. Uh -huh. And here I am in the very early mock-up concept where I'm actually sitting on the roof deciding, can I actually build this? Because we have a legal maximum height of 13.6 that we have to consider. So here I am sitting in a lawn chair on the top of a 1974 GMC motorhome <laughs> with a little cutout of what I think the upper deck might look like. Talk about early concept. But this is it, proof of concept in my backyard. Yeah, okay. We started with a 1950 white Model 3000 cab. This is a really iconic Art Deco cab, very common trash truck from the 1950, but really hard to find now. Uh, built by Devco, which is the T Detroit industrial, I'm sorry, this was a white, I'm sorry, built by white, uh, they built uh, tractors and semi-trucks uh, for the trucking industry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So here we are in the early, we've taken the white nose and mounted on the GMC motorhome chassis and we're starting to build the upper structure all out of solid aluminum. Okay. It's going... So here we are and we've now got the, uh, the white nose painted uh, turquoise and you can see the, all the upper structure now that we're right, start to, uh, to rivet the aluminum side panels to create the entire bus here. Yeah, okay. So here we now are completely skinned. We have the outside completely skinned with aluminum. We've created the front and rear fenders out of flat sheets of aluminum. We've created the handrail for the uh, staircase up the back, but we still don't have any portholes. Right about now, I'm deciding that we need some windows for the sides, and I'm thinking they should be round portholes. Uh, just because I see a kind of a nautilus kind of a of almost an aquatic thing developing here. Yeah. So I walk down the street to my local glass blower friend at the Glass Forge and they help me blow some some bubbled glass portholes. These are actually bubbles and the bubbles increase in bubblosity as we get move forward on the sculpture. So the bubbles get larger and deeper. And there's always an unseen liability with all my sculptures and the bubbled uh, portholes were the unseen liability. People would run up to try to look in my windows and they would forget the fact that they were bubbles and they'd bonk their nose <laughs> on, my, on my bubbled portholes. So um, be careful. Yeah. Um, you can hurt some people bump, bumping their noses. So the <laughs> deco liner was really a fun piece. Um, I hope we have a picture of a dry... Here we are at the Long Beach Auto Rama in Long Beach, California of all places. Yeah. And there's Jay at the wheel uh, for the Jay Leno Garage episode that we did. Yeah. We didn't have it quite finished for that episode, but check it out on, at Jay Leno's Garage. Yeah. Uh, we're driving it around, having it a good time. Yeah. There I am on the way back from uh, the Barrett-Jackson uh, automotive auction, and the, we just had this beautiful sunset that I was driving into, and uh, we're on, right out in the middle of the desert. We just pulled right off the highway and did a little yeah. photo shoot. Yeah. The inside of the deco liner was really great. Uh, had kind of this automotive Nautilus type thing. You can see the round portholes. We have vintage uh, Coke machines. And uh, here again, we try to do everything in a very vintage way. We mix uh, real old pieces with the new to try to confuse. Uh, you know, is this a no new piece? Is this an old piece? Is this something from the 50s? Uh, that's the highest compliment I get when, when someone thinks that it might be something old. Yeah, right, yeah. And here's the staircase up the back. Uh, here we are at Quail Lodge down in Monterey, uh, showing it at the Quail Lodge show. Really yeah. a great show, and a great sh we had a great time at that show with the piece. There were teak stairs yeah. uh, up the back deck. The deco liner was a lot of fun. The wife and I actually put 15,000 miles on the deco liner. We drove it all over the place. We drove it out to Quartzsite when all the campers were out in the middle yeah. of the desert, drove yeah. it out in the desert, spent the night at Quartzsite yeah. in it. So we had a lot of fun. And in all the 15,000 miles, we were in Oregon, Washington, California, Arizona, and Nevada, driving it from the roof with six people up there with me waving at the policeman, <laughs> and we never got stopped even once in 15,000 miles. Great piece, a lot of fun. It now lives in Michigan. <coughs> uh, Mike Johns bought it. He has a, a, a dyslexic son, yeah. 
and the sun can't be strapped down so he can move around in the deco liner right. and then go out and have a good time. Yeah. They go over the Mackinac Bridge driving from the roof. Oh man, Picture oh, that's, that. got, that's gotta be a sight that's to behold. That's a sight, yeah. yep, so fun yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, it's cool that you were able to like have a good amount of time enjoying the vehicle after you got it done before you got it Absolutely. sold. Right? Absolutely, but there's also a certain liability that goes with it. The first time I drove the deco liner, I pull in for gas and a lot of people had followed me off the freeway and I thought that's odd that everyone needs gas at the same time I do. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I didn't figure that they all wanted to look at the deco liner. So I'm surrounded and I'm, I'm, I'm late. I'm trying to get up to the debut at the Portland Art Museum and I'm trying to get out of there. Here comes a bus of 30 deaf kids. The 30 deaf kids all pile out and they surround the bus. And now they're all asking, what is it, what is it, what yeah. is it? And I'm trying to excuse myself. And it was that point that it finally hit me like a ton of bricks. You brought the circus to town but yet you're not letting anybody in. What's wrong with this picture? Yeah. There's, a, there's a real responsibility when it goes to driving something like the deco liner because it's a universal joy machine and it spreads joy and happiness wherever it goes. And if you're in a hurry, yeah, that it, doesn't fit the picture. Yeah, right. And so yeah. those 30 deaf kids made me stop, relax, answer all their questions yeah. because what's more important in the world and spending some time with some kids. And that's, that's, right. that's what's, yeah. what I do a lot. So uh, <clears throat> we've got um, uh, a, uh, a short video uh, that is uh, kind of showcases uh, your decopods. Uh, these were, this, was, this video was uh, put <laughs> together from video that we shot at your, at your shop a few weeks ago. Yep. And so you had, at that time, you had a decopod that was in the process of being put together, being constructed, yep. and we had another one that was already done. That's right. So this video has no, uh, has no audio, but we're going to talk over the, uh, <laughs> uh, about the decopods. Sure. And uh, so uh, we can uh, bring that video up, and we will talk about the decopods in this video. So the first question has to be, what the heck is a decopod? That's right. Well, a yeah. decopod is basically a motor scooter that I've rebodied and put doors on. One of the silliest things ever created, but one of the funnest things you can possibly drive. So here's pictures of a decopod under construction. And what you're looking at is, is the Vespa motor scooter that I've cut up and turned the handlebars over on and cut part of the floor away and just basically chopped up so that it'll now fit the body that I've created to go over it. So now you're looking at this at the aluminum skin that now becomes the shell that fits over the Vespa motor scooter. It's very much like a teardrop shaped uh, piece. Um, it's kind of funny, the deco liner gave birth to the deco pods. And the deco pods kind of look like a deco poop that came out of the deco liner. <laughs> so, uh, but they're, okay. they're really just fun. They're, so this is an MP3 deco pod. Um, it's built on a Piaggio MP3 chassis, so it's a three-wheeler. It has a, it's a 250 cc unit, and these will go almost 70 or 80 miles an hour. So if you can imagine, uh, there's a great video of Jay Leno and I driving deco pods, uh, and they're just ridiculously fun. And don't forget about the deco helmet that's sitting right in yeah. front of us. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So yeah. this is a deco pod. This is, uh, and I built six of these and each one was unique and different no two alike so this one had two headlights it had a single door had a very unique grill had two rear tail lights um, and a bump rail very similar to a bumper car so these are kind of like carnival rides that have run amok uh, they're kind of a carnival ride that you can actually go down the street on and let me tell you when you pull into your local uh, AMP uh, to pick up a quart of milk and you're riding a decopod uh, you get a few looks, let me tell you. <laughs> you get a few, a few looks and yeah. a few smiles. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, it's, you know, I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, I mean, seeing these, uh, these two vehicles and seeing one completed and seeing the process being done on the other, uh, it was really neat. And you talked, you mentioned your deco helmet. And we have the deco helmet right here. That's right. Uh, that's and right. So, so that's like a very 
uh, Flash Gordon-y looking. To infinity and beyond. Yeah. So. So that's really, <laughs> that's really cool. And I, I've seen that video of you with Jay Leno uh, driving in the decopods and with the helmets and, you know, and looking like that was like a really fun uh, thing. Okay. So We really laughed hard and it even made ja Jay laugh really hard. And that's yeah. really what a lot of my work is about. It's about having fun yeah. and uh, being able to laugh at yourself when you're in a decopod with your Flash Gordon helmet on. That's really yeah. what it's about. Now that vehicle that we that you were building, is that now completed? Yes, that's now completed, yep. Okay. Yep, and uh, it's gonna be a Christmas gift for a Bay Area friend of mine. Okay, yep. all right. So uh, he's all excited. Yeah, all righty. Yep. So uh, we got one last vehicle, the Falconer Dodici. The Falconer Dodici, I call the epigee of my career. Uh, here again, we're revisiting the French curve cars. Yep inspired by a 1937 Delahaye um, that was part of the Peter Mullins collection. And when I saw that car in person, it really struck me as automotive perfection in so many ways. So what you're looking at in this photograph is my buck. This is the wooden buck that I create to show me the shape of the body that I'm gonna create. So this is the first step in the process of building a body. So this wooden structure gets removed. It does not stay. It's merely a shape checking template that I use as I'm building my body panels, I'm laying it over my wooden buck to make sure my contours are correct. So here you see some of my, my wooden buck now being covered with the aluminum sheeting. So as I sheet the panels, see the whole back of the car is done, and now I'm working on the front fenders and the reverse curves from the transition between the hood and the fenders. These are very difficult parts to shape. And here we are with the finished vehicle. Um, lap panel construction, where I've reinterpreted the Dodici lines using my lap panels. Uh, the original car was a V12 car, so I started with a Ryan Falconer 12th stack injected 650 horsepower V12 made specifically for this project. The wheelbase is a 160 inch wheelbase. The wheels are 20 by 8 triple cross lace Daytons um, with 100 spoke and they're real knockoffs. Here I am driving it. Uh, down the street in Grants Pass, Oregon. Yep, great car, really fun. Uh, blue leather interior done by Greg's Upholstery right down the street. Real cloisonne badges created by Margarita Pavlova, one of the last cloisonne artists in the world that cr can create this quality of cloisonne. And it's all about the details for me. Um, the cloisonnes, the falconer badges, um, the Dodici, Falconer Dodici. Dodici is Italian for 12. Falconer is honoring Ryan Falconer, the, the engine builder. So the Falconer V12, Falconer Dodici. Just rolls yeah. off the tongue nicely. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and here we are showing it at the Pasadena Art Center show, one of the most prestigious art shows in the country where we actually won the top design award uh, two years ago. What an honor. What an yeah. honor for a crazy guy from Grants Pass, Oregon, who used to make paperweights <laughs> to be able to go to the Pasadena Art Center and walk away with the top design award. Yeah. Well, uh, I've seen your, uh, your paperweights. So there's, you know, those are incredible paperweights. So, uh, but yeah, it's an amazing looking uh, vehicle. So it's all hand formed and hand polished aluminum. It's not stainless steel, it's not chrome. Everything you're looking at is polished aluminum. So I get to use no filler, no bondo, no anything. Um, and I actually like you to see all my hammer marks. Um, a lot of people think I use an English wheel. My primary tool is a hammer. And uh, if you look very closely, you'll see the stipple from the hammer marks uh, all over this car. Uh, it's one of the real defining uh, unique aspects of this car. Beautiful yeah. car. It was debuted at the, uh, uh, at the Monterey Jet Set Party and at Quail Lodge uh, two years ago. Like I say, mm -hmm. one of the best cars I've ever built. Well, it's been, uh, it's been amazing to talk to you about your, your, your life in auto design and the cars you build. I just wish I had the money to commission you uh, to build something. But, and in regards to that, do people actually come to you for private commissions of design vehicles or do you just like? What's do... really important to me is that I get to build exactly what I want, how I right. want. Okay. So customers that come to me, I demand c complete artistic control over my projects. And what I really am is a problem solver. So if you have a problem, 
I can solve it. Um, I just invented and built a machine that can trim 100 pounds of hemp in an hour. Okay. <laughs> so there's a so a glass artist, uh, automotive artist, and now an uh, industrial machine builder. Yeah, okay. I don't know, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy, I very much appreciate your coming on to the show, and, uh, and I'm honored to have you on the show and for you to be my last uh, guest artist for 2019. Thank you for having me, and if you yeah. want a copy of the book from Mind to Metal that features all my work, just Google that, Mind to Metal, you can pick up a copy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Randy, very much. Thank so, you. Thank you. And uh, so that's the, the end of our uh, show, Road Valley. And uh, we will uh, let you know that this is our last episode for 2019, but we will continue in 2020 with a new season of shows uh, featuring local artisans and exploring new uh, art media that we've yet to feature on the show. And uh, so I'm looking forward to bringing you another season of really wonderful artists from our region. And uh, I thank Randy Grubb for agreeing to come on to the show and being our fe last featured artist for 2019. And uh, so I thank you all very much for watching the show. And uh, we will see you next time, Road Valley. <laughs> thank you for watching Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can watch the show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. on Channel 15 in Ashland and via Charter Cable on Channel 182. You can watch the show on demand at rvtv.sou.edu by searching for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow David Glamour Dave Nino on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Just search for Glamour Dave. If you like this show and wish to support David Glamour Dave Nino and his show productions, you can visit his Patreon page at patreon.com slash Glamour Dave to become a patron supporter. We want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together and to thank RVTV for their wonderful studio facility that allows us to produce shows such as this one. If you'd like to become a studio producer and create your own public access show, you can contact RVTV to learn how by calling 541-552-6898.